Now we're here with the stretch seating Cummins powered wagon that was done here at Predator almost a decade ago, maybe a little bit more. So it's great to revisit these builds. Welcome back to another vlog guys. Pleasure showing our world to you. We have a few updates today on introduction to this truck behind me. It's gonna be a full pull, paint, interior, engine swap, uh, all of the above. But then we're gonna to get to that stretch seating, an update on that truck. 40, 50% of the prep work has been done for paint. Similar color, but with that texture element. Uh, it is a, a ranch truck, very utilitarian finishment all wrapped up. So on this truck, it's gonna be going with a Lamborghini orange. So we'll show you some pretty neat wheels of the customer centers that he wants to put on there that have accents of that orange, which you'll start to see throughout this build with color match springs, color match exterior, and a few other elements on this suspension that's gonna go that same color. Standard Duramax, ARP head studs, main studs, PPE manifold, stage four transmission, which takes that transmission capacity of the Allison up through the roof. Uh, we've put our 700 horsepower assault motor through that stage four and handles it without flaw. Uh, our heavy duty cooling package, which you can see here going on the, the cooling stack, so the supplemental fan, that thin mount evaporator. We have our, our two coolers, fuel return and power steering, plus our, our radiator and intercooler. Uh, the radiator is something you can source on our website. Coming out this way, you'll see we have our fuel filter relocation off the factory Duramax. The original Duramax mounts uh, out here and hangs in that passenger wheel well of the regular HD truck been relocated to the factory H1 location. That little white thingy material yeah. thing right there, yeah, right? That yellow lead coming out of it is the water and, and fuel separator wire. That gets done on the body side. Now, I remember when I was doing conversions years ago, I was on the frame. Uh, every now and then I'd do the body side of it, but the guy up on this side has to do a ton of work. That fuel filter relocation, the adjustment to the shift levers for the two inch lift from the Duramax swap. Uh, and then the frame guy has to pressure wash, steam clean, and, and prep that frame for paint. And uh, while the, the other guy gets the other parts together, the motor mounts and everything else, to start hanging this, this motor in the hole. So, this thing, it just got started, what, two, three days ago? Yeah. And the, uh, the six fives. The takeaway. Yeah, or whatever, the six right? Fives I, I get the hand in there. So people know they got to see what I'm pointing to, you know? Or I just cover up your face. So that way they can't see you anymore. Scroll down, comment below, <laughs> below if you want to hear more of Jason or see more of other people on this side of the, the camera. Uh, uh, but yes, sir, we started this on Monday. Um, the guys work after hours, so they're not dealing with deliveries and, and daily scheduling. Uh, it doesn't affect the ongoing workload that we have on all the trucks because we have quite a stack schedule. So they do it after hours, be throughout this week. Uh, eventually we're gonna get this body down. I'll perform all the break-in miles before we strip it and send it to paint. I wanna show you something else. Right. Uh, it's got our stage four transmission, which is not typical, but definitely a strong recommendation for that one. And then our mounts for the rear fan sits right here. That's, That's where we- the transmission cooler? Exactly, yes sir. That's why these, these lines are looped right now. It's eventually gonna pump, pump up here and out on that. And that'll keep that transmission, that stage four transmission running. Primo, yeah, nice and cool. ARP head studs, main studs, uh, PPE manifold, that's what we usually do. And it just, it's a great package. It's, it's been tested and proven, nothing wrong with it. Why change it? Uh, there's other options we can do to it, make it better. But this has just been our staple, our bread and butter as it were. Where's I, the takeout motor? Over there by Where the wheels. That thing? Oh. It's a twin screw. So what happens with the takeout motor? Yeah, that's a good question, Salazar, thank you. Um, ding ding. The takeout <laughs> motor is something that we do offer. Uh, it is first come, first serve. It typically goes on maybe even eBay or have customers lined up ready to, to get that. 6.5 turbo diesel came out of the, the yellow soft top there. This is what we would sell well, as that takeout. We do retain the torque, uh, torque motor, the transfer case for reinstall in that vehicle after we do the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive swap on it. So these are a great motor. Um, Humvee, you wanna upgrade your Humvee, get the 6.5 in there. You gotta do some playing around with the injection pump and everything else to get that computer out of the way. But on the other side of it, you can also add it on any other platform. For a long time, we had a customer uh, who would come down and he bought maybe six of these for different FJ projects. 
really cool i like that old school platform but anyway again just let us know if you're looking for something get your name on a list and uh maybe we can uh get you one of these for your for whatever build you have going yeah because these things go really quick because we i don't ever just see Not them quick sitting around fast, but no yeah they sell quick <laughs> that's yeah okay yes. <laughs> yes yes they do they do move quick they sell quick yeah. Yes, they sell quick because I never see these just sitting here in stock. So we try and sell these fast as we can. We got them at cut rate cost. Some that we can get your project up to speed with a new power plant. I want to show you those wheels. Four Giottis. Uh, great wheel. The 24, I believe. So this is going to be the color the vehicle is getting into. Uh, Lamborghini base color, I believe. Like they're burnt orange, but... So the paint's going to match. Paint is going to match that. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Strong That's actually a really, really sick orange. Yeah, you know, initially I was kind of taken by it, didn't know what to think. Since then, we've done the copper truck and we've seen how that's accessorized. That was a very strong color, but all those black accents really set it off. I imagine the same thing's gonna happen with this. It's gonna be strong in itself, put a new black soft top on there, start getting some brush guards, bumpers, uh, all the works. It's really gonna, this, the color's gonna pop to me and I see the and I've never, I've never seen us do a Hummer in that color, or even let alone seen a Hummer in that, yeah, in no, that orange yeah, color. Yeah, no. So that's going to be rad. Yeah, it's cool. I like how they're kind of, everyone's stretching. They want a different color. There's a copper truck, we want one of them. This truck, we need another. Uh, the one we're going to showcase out here, they stretch seating. Similar color than what it was, but we're going to do that texture treatment of that same color, hue. So that should be pretty cool. Now we're here with the stretch seating Cummins powered wagon that was done here at Predator almost a decade ago, maybe a little bit more. So it's great to revisit these builds. You see some some elements of this build that we haven't done since that we I do want to re-implement. Utilizing a, an extra electronics box, a, an area here where we can, can stash some of the extra computer systems, especially when we have the, the Cummins to Allison combo. Because you need to have that standalone TCM. So now you have the transmission control module. You have that the ECM PCM for the, uh, the the Cummins itself. Even on the Duramax, there's an ECM and a TCM. Uh, we don't transport transfer the BCM body control module on any of the trucks. Even the the, uh, the H2, we just work with what's existing on the vehicle. So we are going to pull the roof rack off, and prep that roof to oh, yeah, be that hasn't coated. Been yet, huh? No, that's uh, still as is. So that's uh, original color. That is. That's a good good thing to bring up. We got the original color there, which is kind of like a, a green in there somewhere. That's going to be texture coat. I don't know if they call it the woodland green. I think it's a little bit lighter. Yeah, I have to figure out the color code of that one. It's slightly mm. different. A great color, nice and light. It's going to be a ranch vehicle, so it needs to be robust. That's why we're doing that texture finish. It's going to be a remarkable vehicle. We're going to have some armament additions to this because it is a hunting rig out of a ranch. The magic behind a good paint job, as I think Wilson's mentioned a few times, is the prep. That's 90, 80, 90% 90 of the work is the prep. Anyone can spray color on it. But it's how you prep that surface to be able to accept that paint is really what's going to give you longevity of the house. But this does show you full seal replacement. That's always going to be changed out. Hardware fully removed. You know, we're going to get it to where it should not see this original color anywhere on the vehicle. Everything is stripped off this truck so you can reset it. These are going to be pulled off. You know, they're still mounted in there. Usually we're going to hang, hang with one screw. The roof rack's left on there to try for convenience. When we go to paint, we'll just yank that buff that roof and then go ahead and spray it all in one. You'll see the one modification we had to do for the seat notch. That's where the original fuel fill is. Now we've got the, uh, the old glory holder. One thing I see now, which I've never noticed before. Judo, yes. you got a second? Is that a custom tank? I never noticed it before. Obviously the fuel fill has been changed because it's extended. The factory center plate and everything. Yeah. Maybe it's not a full tank, but a smaller one. I've never seen it at all in any part, any vehicles we've done. So that's unique, you know. Uh, I've never seen a tank like that. 
The original tank is 17 gallon. That might be 12 gallon. Alpha one right there. Yeah, yeah. You look at the the Alpha, the 2006, which is a nice one. I have installed a good few of these in the um, post converted trucks because we go up two inches, so it allows us to put the bigger uh, rear tank in there and bigger main tank even, getting a few more more gallons. But you see the profile dramatically different how that's done. Walking further down the side here, you'll see we have our seat boxes for the custom seat mount with that seat notch. Everything's moved, been moved down, plus shortened slightly because the customer re uh, requested a bit more headroom in here. And then we're gonna wrap up the rest of the interior, might change the dash, uh, enhance that a little bit. Possibly even that alpha dash you've seen so much popularity lately. Change is good, do something new, uh, refresh this thing, so we hold new truck when it's done. Thanks for watching another episode. Kind of a random one today, kind of bounce around, but I hope you did enjoy some of what we're sharing, upcoming builds, stuff we're in the middle of, updates again, all, in, all importantly on that uh, stretch seating, Cummins powered. Uh, we might touch a little bit on this truck behind me, a really large twin turbo Cummins under the hood. And uh, we got some you know, magic to be coming soon on that particular build. It's been with us a couple years ago and it's back again, just showed up today. So again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, subscribe, notification button per Salazar's request, and uh, look forward to showing you next episode coming up shortly.